The Foreign Affairs Department is tightening rules for the issuance of tourist visas to Chinese nationals to fend off, quote, unsavory people and syndicates. The agency insists that this is not related to current national security issues and has to do with curbing Pogo activity or Philippine offshore gaming operators. Now here to discuss this, we have with us live via Zoom DFA Undersecretary Jesus Domingo. Good evening, Yusek Domingo. Thanks for being with us. Uh, good evening, Paul. Uh, there's so much to talk about, but first let's get to this uh, new visa rules for the Chinese. Um, you have to admit the timing is a bit suspect, given elevated tensions <laughs> in the West yeah. Philippine Sea, and particularly today with the National Security Council calling for expulsion of Chinese diplomats, which is a very serious uh, escalation mm. in this uh, bitter row over the sea. In any case, the point is, um, can you walk us through this decision-making process for the DFA? How did it get to this point that you decided, okay, we need to tighten rules for Chinese nationals? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, big story. Well, actually, um, let's uh, let's all go back to last year when. Um, so, on one hand, actually, we wanted um, to facilitate the um, visa issuance process for two big um, uh, markets for tourism and investment, uh, basically China and India. So, um, Chinese and Indian nationals must secure visas in order to uh, visit the Philippines, unlike, say, our, our neighbors in ASEAN, um, developed countries, uh, OECD countries, and come in uh, visa-free. So we had begun, um, uh, starting with China, an e-visa project. Uh, basically, people can apply online. Um, we started in August, but because there were some difficulties um, with you know, aligning with the payment systems, um, we had to take, take the process offline for now, to work out the bugs, but also, and this is more tied to the uh, the the this very recent decision to um, to uh, introduce new measures in, in the visa issuance process, um, which I'll get to. But also, we um, we just are completing the uh, beta testing of our e visas for for Indian nationals. So um, okay, so actually, let's also look at the challenges we've had with uh, passports. So over the past. Over the past weeks, we've had hearings at the Senate and the House of Representatives um, looking at the matter of uh, Chinese, but also other uh, nationalities who have illicitly obtained valid uh, Philippine uh, passports. Uh, so um, the, so this, uh, we have an interagency grouping called the uh, uh, Interagency uh, Committee on uh, Passport um, irregularities, ICPI, um, but also uh, now for the past, uh, recently, we've been seeing more and more instances of fraudulent documents um, being submitted in support of uh, visa applications uh, overseas, uh, particularly for, uh, for Chinese nationals. So um, the, uh, what we found that uh, in order to help curb this, we should institute, uh, basically, um, it's not a radical departure from our existing uh, passport, uh, sorry, uh, visa uh, issuance regulation. So you, you had uh, flashed on the screen, uh, basically, uh, uh, for Chinese nationals. Well, actually, any nationals that require um, a, a visa uh, to apply to visit the Philippines, they need to present their basic ID, um, the uh, bank, bank statement, certificate of employment, uh, we have to uh, verify that they have a round-trip ticket um, and uh, proof of uh, financial uh, capacity. So th these are actually in place already. Um, and also personal appearance. For, uh, again, we're talking about individual applicants. What is new is that, um, but the problem had been, we found that um, there had been uh, numerous instances of fake uh, financial capacity documents, basically, um, employment, certifications, bank accounts. So we're actually introducing a measure that actually other embassies in China are using, and that is the applicant must produce a social insurance certificate. So social insurance are basically like our SSS or GSIS. And the benefit of that for security purposes, this can be verified with the Chinese government's uh, social insurance authorities. But countries already like the United States, uh, Japan, South Korea, have been instituting this step for their visa applications. Also, 
Um, we will be requiring a um, uh, clearly more ide clearly identify the uh, the sponsor or the host of the um, of the visiting Chinese national. Um, also, um, we will be well. There are another uh, some other measures. For example, if someone had been uh, rejected from applying, uh, we will take uh, we will um, lengthen the period by which they can apply again. Okay, so that's for individual visa applicants. Now, for um, the other way uh, Chinese tourists can come in is through applying for with a group visa. So the group visa basically means well, it's, it's easier in the sense that um, one, you do not need to have a personal interview. Uh, you come as a group uh, led by a, uh, a tour guide, and the tour guide only it's a tour guide who needs to come to the embassy or the consulate uh, to apply. But this tour guide must be a representative of a, a legitimate, a verified uh, Chinese tour operator who, in turn, must be partnered uh, with a Philippine uh, travel agency. Um, so we will now, so the, the, the additional uh, security measure we're taking is that a group tour uh, a group must comprise of at least 10 individuals. Mm -hmm. Up to now, it's just we required uh, three. Right. And also, well, this is actually um, something that we have in place already. If you come in a tour group, you have mm. to arrive in the Philippines together, and you must uh, leave together. Mm. And these visas are not convertible. Right. right. Yeah. But the whole, in a nutshell, mm. right. that, those are our new measures. Yeah. For the individual visa, the requirement of social insurance uh, proof, and for the group tour, increasing the number uh, of the group tour from 3 to 10 as a minimum. Right, Yusek, but as you pointed out, Last year, just last year, you were talking about e-visas for Chinese and Indian yes. nationals. And then now, yes. less than half a year later, we're talking about tighter restrictions. That is a my, massive jump. And I'm wondering what happened in between that made you decide to go the other way. Oh. Especially considering that, okay, I understand your point about curbing POGO activity. But actually, POGOs have actually dwindled from the time of former President mm. Duterte. There has been a crackdown, right? So right, what happened right, in right. that time period? Uh, E-visas, last we heard, was supposed to have been implemented by December or August 2023. Was that correct? And then now well, here we, we had, are. We had implemented the E-visa starting August, but because of um, problems with the payments platform and um, now uh, so this, uh, this, other, uh, this other problem of uh, fraudulent uh, documents. Um, so this is actually this is quite, quite a... Um, it's a, a very involved technical um, operation. We do this in partnership with the uh, DICT. So we are still working out the bugs there, so they're on, on pause. But however, may I also add this, that we are also eager to increase the number of quality uh, Chinese tourists. Right. Uh, uh, said... Those who, um, particularly families, those who are really going for um, enjoying our, our world-class uh, beaches, diving, surfing, and whatnot. So. Uh, there is not really a, a contradiction in our policy. We want to bring in more matino tourism and keep out the riffraff. We we want the same th exact same thing, Yusek. I, I I understand where you're coming from, but I think what we're curious to know is because the whole one of the rationales that was given uh, behind this change or tightening in in the screening process for visas for Chinese nationals was to mm -hmm. curb pogo mm -hmm. activities. We have heard, of course, we do work in news. We have heard of instances when when certain pogo mm. um, employees mm -hmm. are embroiled in like. A, petty crimes, etc. Um, mm -hmm. How much of these petty crimes or crimes are the reason exactly behind this tightening in visa screenings? Um, well, Rina, we, see, we must see this in tandem with our tightening up of our passport issuance activities. Again, we've been spending many hours with our legislators looking at how and taking measures to prevent uh, foreigners uh, illicitly obtaining uh, legitimate Philippine passports. So this is actually going hand in hand. So we see um, the, uh, uh, the close connection between passport issuance and visa issuance. So this isn't really a, a radical uh, change in policy, but just a natural consequence of how, well, the whole of government is taking seriously the matter of uh, foreigners who have been coming in illicitly, or they came in, come in legitimately, but illicitly extend their stay or 
uh, undertake uh, nefarious uh, activities. So okay, wait. You mentioned uh, passports? It's not a radical jump, I would say. Sorry, Sorry. to interrupt, uh, Yusak, but you mentioned um, the, it's really getting a visa and getting a Philippine passport so some Chinese nationals extend and somehow manage to get Philippine passports. Am I understanding what you said correctly? Okay, yeah. So, well, look, let's, let's walk through this. First of all, we have many cases and of a number of cases where Chinese, but not just Chinese, also other nationals uh, who have used uh, fake, uh, well, have managed to attain legitimate Philippine passports. And the basis of a Philippine passport is a, uh, a Philippine Statistics Authority uh, issued uh, Philippine birth certificate together with corroborating uh, government documents such as um, uh, voters ID or driver's licenses. So there have been um, hearings um, in the House and the Senate looking into how they were able, how these people were able to obtain documentation. But before they are in the process of obtaining documentation, they get, had to get to the country, into the country uh, first. And um, a number of them perhaps came well, they would have come as, as tourists right. uh, and just got, got into the Philippines. And then from there, boom, uh, mm -hmm. began the process of yeah. Ill illicitly, uh, Ill obtaining, uh, illicitly obtaining Philippine passports. So you're, you're saying uh, uh, that uh, it's uh, mostly Philippine documents that are uh, fraudulent, the ones that they're getting are fake. Philippine documents to be able to obtain passports, or what kind of? Um... Oh, well, somehow, somehow, mm. they were able to get legitimate um, PSA oh. birth certificates. So this is being investigated, but this is, of course, under the charge of yeah. of the PSA. So how? I mean, there are a number of ways that they perhaps they. I mean, how they get the legitimate PSA uh, birth certificate, and with the legitimate PSA birth certificate and uh, other corroborating documents, mm. by and large, uh, well, we have to honor them. However, because we've become, many of our um, frontliners who take in uh, passport applications get a bit suspicious. So sometimes mm -hmm. uh, we ask them, we, sometimes these applicants do not speak um, Filipino nor English. So in, in times, we, we flag this with the NBI. We have been able to catch some, mm -hmm. uh, so, some of these uh, applicants who who, who uh, otherwise present legitimate documents, but clearly are not Filipino. We have big suspicion. So again, we are coordinating with our sister agencies, BI, uh, NBI, and so on, uh, to stem this. You said you're talking about tightening uh, it on the tourist visa, and how about the other kinds of visas, such as student visas, working visas. I mean, we know uh, oh, okay. all the suspicion over in Cagayan, over the uh, rise mm. in Chinese students in that area. Um, we, we have this hearing uh, with, with, with the mayor mm -hmm. of Tarlac. I mean, um, how about to that end? Are we also tightening okay, on yeah. that well, end? Well, yeah, that, that definitely that had a bearing on our decision, uh, the Cagayan case. In this sense, is that well? First of all, um, uh, so we're focusing first on the simple initial entry visa, visitors visa. We're, that's what DFA is focusing on. But many students or uh, foreigners who come uh, to study and eventually obtain student visas, they have two choices. They can try to get a student visa overseas through our embassies or consulates, but it's a very difficult and lengthy process. Uh, there has to be documentation and verification from CHED, the actual school, and so on. The easier route has been uh, for would-be students to first get a visitor's tourist visa, come to the Philippines, and then convert it once they're in the Philippines. But that process is, is led by the Bureau of Immigration, but of course, in turn, also coordinated by, with CHED and the, the school concern. But yeah, that's, again, so a gateway to many of these students who are now under scrutiny is they initially, many of them, if not most of them, came initially with visitors' visas and just converted them mm -hmm. in the Philippines. Right. And once they, they have the passports, do they then, um, do, you, do you find them skirting around like ownership rules, etc.? Uh, I'm talking about oh, foreign sorry. ownership. Okay, yeah. let's, 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 let's uh, sorry, it, let's divide the, the, the visa issue and the passport issue. I just mentioned both because, again, yeah. that's, within the care, that's within the purview of Department of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. But to help get the context why um, we we decided to tighten up our visa issuance uh, process. Yeah. Uh, 
Chinese tourists are historically one of the largest uh, groups of tourists to yes. the Philippines. Uh, so far this year, I think they're third largest. We have the numbers for that. We could just call it up. Yes. Uh, more than 130,000 so far this year alone, as of April. Yes. Did you consult with other agencies before you implemented this uh, measure? Uh, for instance, NEDA, for instance, well, Tourism we, Department, for instance, the Office of Secretary Go, who is in charge of bringing in investments. Well, we, uh, we have been, even, even since the, uh, the e visa process, we've been in, in touch, we've uh, attended meetings of the uh, private sector ad advisory group on, on tourism. We work closely with the Bureau of Immigration and so on. So in fact, um, one of the things that uh, we are working on is the uh, revision of the process for accrediting uh, travel and tour agencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... But also, there had been meetings with... Well, this is actually had been the challenge up until recently, is that um, we found the need to better coordinate the, um, the economic, our economic agencies, our business-oriented agencies like Department of Tourism, DTI, uh, and so on, with the security sector, mm. uh, with NSA, DND, DILG, PNP. So we really have, it's always a balance between uh, business and economic considerations and national security considerations as well. Absolutely, but apologies, Yusek, I didn't quite understand your answer. So this was signed off on by NEDA, Tourism Department, DTI, and OSAPEA? Well, we have the Department of Foreign Affairs has the prerogative with regards to uh, visa issuance. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have an ongoing conversation with them, um, but we felt that this was really, uh, this was really reaching... Uh, uh, re requiring immediate action on our part. And even before, up to now, that our posts overseas have the discretion, have always had the discretion to require more documentation or more interviews, for example, from applicants who, you know, we would have some questions about. But definitely, um, we are in close coordination with our other agencies, sister agencies. And when do you expect to roll out these new rules? Uh, we were in the process of doing that within this month. Uh, but again, we have to... Um, also, this will take some time um, as uh, announcements and um, what's syndicated in the website will, will, take, will take a few days, but we looked at uh, completing this process within this month of May. Okay. Just in time for the end of summer. But uh, thank you so much for <laughs> your time to, and taking time out to clarify the issue with us, DFA Undersecretary Jesus Domingo.